Hi, Heidi. Hey, Sabrina. Nice to see you. You too. And I hope you're well today. And hello, everyone. And welcome to another episode of Event Profs Together at Home. I am Sabrina Myers from Hot Hospitality Exchange. And today, the fabulous event prof that I'm speaking to is Heidi. Well, now, um, I've been with Heidi for a few months, uh, and we first met as I went on an amazing fam trip uh, to Oslo, uh, which was organized by Heidi, and she'll tell you a little bit about what she does, as well as the Nordic Choice Hotel Group. And we got along really well. We had some amazing, life-changing experiences together, definitely for me. <laughs> um, she built up, or she she basically inspired me to abseil down Holmen Kong in, in Oslo, which, let me tell you, is terrifying. But I will now pass it over to Heidi to let uh, well introduce herself, what she does, who she is, where she is based, and where she is right now and the situation there. So I'm going to hand it over to Heidi. Take it away. Well, Sabrina, first of all, thanks for doing this and for having me. I do remember that abseiling moment very, very well. And I have to say, I tried to encourage everybody as much as I could, but you did it all on your own. I was very proud of you. <laughs> so Thank well you. done. <laughs> I'm Heidi from the Mice Guru. The Mice Guru is a destination management company, and we basically we consult, we create, produce all types of corporate events all over Norway for international clients mostly. I am based in Norway, obviously. I am uh, at home, working from home, as many others in uh, Stavanger, a beautiful city on the west coast. And the situation here is kind of, I would like to say, a soft lockdown compared to many other countries. Mm -hmm. The Norwegian government doesn't like to be too authoritarian and go in with all kinds of punishments and police, etc., etc. So they kind of rely on the common sense of the citizens, mm -hmm. which is working to some extent. <laughs> well, it's going pretty well. I'm waiting to see what happens uh, in the press conference today because there's some new rules coming up but they decided to start opening schools again uh, from 20th and 27th of April so they're easing the rules a little bit uh, lifting some of the restrictions to see how that goes and if it's necessary to to tighten them again after that or not I am basically living in a small apartment I work from home I'm here on my own all alone uh, that has advantages and disadvantages I guess <laughs> but uh, that's the situation for me right now do you normally work from home quite a lot or is this kind of like the first time you've been for obviously an extended amount of time working from home do you have like a setup uh, somehow do you move around how is it kind of working right now I have absolutely no setup at home for working from home because I am constantly on the move and otherwise in the office yeah uh, I mean I'm used to work from anywhere so that's not a problem but for such a long period like this, I had to improvise a little bit. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, absolutely. And so are you kind of still following your like daily working hours or are you kind of just, you know, taking it as it comes? I'm a little bit more flexible right now. I've actually become much more relaxed somehow, <laughs> weirdly. <laughs> Uh, I, kind of, I don't have an alarm clock anymore. I wake up automatically every day around half past seven. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of try not to be too hard on myself. I get motivated, figure out what I want to do with my day, uh, the things I have to do and the things I want to do and uh, make up my mind. And I, uh, if I'm very motivated, I'll just work a very long day. And if I'm not, then I'll just take it a little bit more easy, um, maybe work a little later in the evening time. But I don't necessarily have a fixed uh, schedule or, or fixed working hours. Got it. And what are your three daily essentials right now? First of all, good coffee. <laughs> 
<laughs> and definitely my uh, TV, which uh, works as my big screen. Now I connect it to, to my laptop um, because it's great working from the laptop, but not for such a long time. I need to be able to, to spread out a little bit. And the TV is actually huge. So that works perfectly <laughs> fine. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> and then definitely some music. I love working with music, so I put some background music on. I used to do that in the office as well. Sometimes uh, my colleagues didn't really like me for it or we put headsets on, but <laughs> right now I always have music on in the background. That keeps me like in good spirits. Um, have you come to any kind of realizations about yourself in this time? <laughs> Many probably, but <laughs> I would like to, um, well, I actually realized that the morning walk to work mm -hmm. had a very important function <laughs> uh, because it kind of, it's not a long walk, it's 10, 12 minutes from where I live to, to where I usually work. And yeah. uh, not having that kind of uh, exercise in the morning and uh, the time to kind of figure out what you want to do with your day mm -hmm. makes it a little bit more difficult to start in the morning like I can't start straight from getting out of bed uh, I need some time and I need to to to, to eat yeah it. just put everything uh, on a, in a schedule or, or figure out what I want to do with my day. And I've realized that in the same time, I haven't necessarily been very good at taking breaks mm -hmm. before or even now. And I'm thinking that it's quite important to start implement those breaks in my life, especially yeah. go out for some fresh air, have more exercise during the day because I realize that we're constantly in front of screens and especially when I get into the zone, like when I'm under pressure or under deadlines, it's, it's natural. But now when I'm trying to figure out something new or design something new, I get in the zone, I can go on for hours and hours and hours and time just flies by. And in the end of the day, I'm just exhausted. Mm. So I'm trying to make a point of changing that behavior and structure breaks into my day. Absolutely. So I would say that's definitely one of the things that you're doing from a wellness perspective. So, you know, what are other things that you're doing from a wellness perspective? perspective both sort of um, mentally as well as physically well in the morning now I have a new I have this whole routine and this whole new ritual <laughs> going yeah. on uh, I wake up in the morning and first of all I make my bed not that I didn't do that before but I realized that it's kind of more important now it gives this first like push kind of tiny, yeah tiny push uh, uh, to, to start my day and then I uh, exercise um, just right here in mm -hmm. the living room uh, for um, exactly about three to four songs on my playlist <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> and then uh, like it's a, an intense short core uh, core strength uh, fitness kind of routine and then I take my music into the bathroom and put it on full blast and shower dance and sing in the shower and then <laughs> I will <laughs> come back and set up my working space because I live in a very small apartment mm -hmm. so I'm basically moving around the furniture I'm moving my table in front of the tv connecting everything I try to make it a little more cozy I put some flowers I get myself a cup of coffee mm -hmm. and that's generally how I start my day and it works very well with that little physical activity in the beginning Okay. And then mentally to, to kind of get through this period, I try to learn new things. I feel it really motivates. Like whenever I'm, I'm not feeling it too much, the current situation or how it's developing or uh, getting a little worried, I try to refocus and get inspired by something new. Yeah. And that, that for me works very, very well. Fantastic. No, that's definitely good advice. So can you give us any recommendations of things you've been doing, watching, reading, learning that have brought you sort of some joy or some positivity in these days, in this time? Well, actually, there's so many. There's way too many to mention. I mean, I've been following a, a whole lot of uh, accounts on Instagram and uh, webinars and educationals, and all of them have to contribute something. I try to, uh, in the first 
in the first two weeks or like week, it was like an overload. So you wanted to participate in everything and see everything and, and, and know everything. Yeah. And now I've kind of toned that down a little bit. It's quite necessary because it gets too much and too overwhelming. But I love um, one specific account on uh, Instagram uh, from uh, Stress Matters, Stress Matters HQ. They have just, yeah. just a very plain, simple, regular quote that's usually very calming <laughs> uh, that, that I appreciate a lot and then also I do enjoy um, watching some musical live streams too. Mm -hmm. Definitely um, and as you say obviously we are all consuming so much content right now online. Um, are you practicing any kind of digital detox at all? I do actually. I try to restrict my uh, social media use to specific times in the day. Like I would check everything three times a day, let's say, but not continuously have everything running and open because it's so distracting. Okay. And then in the same time, when I really feel I've had enough and I've noticed that happens more now than before, Yeah. like week let's say I'll be like I can't do this anymore I don't want to see any articles I don't want to see any blogs or hear anybody talk about anything or give any opinions I've heard a million opinions and then I just <laughs> shut everything down for for like a, a day I can't manage more than a day but just like slow down on my own posts and the own things I share and just really not go through entire feeds and all stories and just take it down a notch that helps. So what is the first place? Uh, and I know that you are obviously in a softer lockdown in, in Norway, but once, you know, all the restrictions are lifted and you can leave your house and, you know, everything is open again, what is the first place that you're going to go to? Well, that's definitely going to be gathering with friends and going out for dinner and some drinks and go dancing. I mean, we're uh, still in lockdown. So I mean, all restaurants and bars and public places are closed as mm -hmm. everywhere else. Yep. So I'm really looking forward to have that sense of social life again, especially Good. sitting here on my own every day. Yeah, <laughs> I miss that too as well. And once we can all get on a plane and travel again, where do you want to go? Did you have anything scheduled this year or, you know, where, where are you just like saying, oh, I just want to go fly there right now? Well, I hope and don't think I would uh, uh, go on holiday <laughs> right after this. I would rather, <laughs> I would rather probably take clients on site inspections that were due. Yeah. So travel within Norway first, um, hopefully to to work on some uh, projects. Mm -hmm. I had mostly work related uh, trips on the schedule that have been cancelled. So those uh, fairs and sales missions will probably start up. Again again at, at some point exactly. uh, so that's probably going to be the first thing I do uh, travel for business and with clients to to show them around our gorgeous destination <laughs> excellent I cannot wait for that as well and last question any words of advice for all of us event profs that are in this wonderful situation together <laughs> <laughs> wonderful um <laughs> Definitely keep planning uh, and encourage your clients. If you're not a client, but you work towards end clients, encourage everybody to not stop, yeah. to keep plan, plan, planning, planning ahead, uh, get projects confirmed for 2021 and, and, and see it from a, from a human point of view, like trying to save the industry and everyone around us, not only ourselves, but all the suppliers, everybody, it's all connected. And if we manage to, to convince our clients that have uh, specific events that, that definitely will need to take place at some point to, to make that decision earlier rather than later, I think that's very helpful for everybody. And then just to stay sane and healthy and take everything day by day, I'd say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Heidi, for chatting with me today. So wonderful catching up with you again. And, uh, and I love seeing all um, that you are doing with the Mice Guru online and just trying all sorts of different things and, and, you know, experimenting as well as, you know, just learning yourself. I think it's fantastic. And 
I really appreciate you giving us some time today and having a chat with us. And I look forward to seeing you in the flesh again very soon, I hope. Fingers crossed. And thank you all for watching another episode of Event Props Together at Home. I'm Sabrina Myers from Hot Hospitality Exchange. Stay positive, stay inside, and we're all going to get through this together. So stay tuned. Much more to come. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye, Sabrina. Bye.